I am continuing my reading. What I'm doing in this series is to read through the entire standard works of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. This consists of the Bible, the Book of Mormon, the Doctrine and Covenants, and the Pearl of Great Price. I am reading in a chronological order of events, not according to publication or volume, so I will be skipping around a bit as I move along. We are continuing with Jeremiah for a while. This will be chapter 2. The Jews forsook the Lord, the foundation of living waters. They changed their gods, worshipped idols, and rejected the prophets. I also want to mention that this video does have a Joseph Smith translation in it. What the Joseph Smith translation is, this is an inspired translation or correction of the Bible done by Joseph Smith to restore those passages that had been lost over the years. Moreover, the word of the Lord came to me, saying, Go and cry in the ears of Jerusalem, saying, Thus saith the Lord, I remember thee, the kindness of thy youth, the love of thine espousals, when thou wentest after me in the wilderness, in a land that was not sown. Israel was holiness unto the Lord, and the first fruits of his increase. All that devour him shall offend, evil shall come upon them, saith the Lord. Hear ye the word of the Lord, O house of Jacob, and all the families of the house of Israel. Thus saith the Lord, What iniquity have your fathers found in me, that they are gone far from me, and have walked after vanity, and have become vain? Neither said they, Where is the Lord that brought us up out of the land of Egypt, that led us through the wilderness, through a land of deserts and of pits, through a land of drought and of the shadow of death, through a land that no man passed through and where no man dwelt? And I brought you into a plentiful country to eat the fruit thereof and the goodness thereof, but when ye entered, ye defiled my land, and made mine heritage an abomination. The priests said not, Where is the Lord? And they that handled the law knew me not. The pastors also transgressed against me, and the prophets prophesied by Baal, and walked after things that do not profit. Wherefore, I will yet plead with you, saith the Lord, and with your children's children will I plead. For pass over the isles of Chittim, and see... And send unto Kedar, and consider diligently, and see if there be such a thing. Hath a nation changed their gods, which are yet no gods? But my people have changed their glory for that which doth not profit. Be astonished, O ye heavens, at this, and be horribly afraid. Be ye very desolate, saith the Lord, for my people have committed two evils. They have forsaken me, the fountain of living waters, and hewed them out cisterns, broken cisterns, that can hold no water. Is Israel a servant? Is he a home-born slave? Why is he spoiled? The young lions roared upon him and yelled, and they made his land waste. His cities are burned without inhabitant. Also the children of Noph and the Hapanese have broken the crown of thy head. Hast thou not procured this unto thyself, in that thou hast forsaken the Lord thy God when he led thee by the way? And now what hast thou to do in the way of Egypt? to drink the waters of Sihor? Or what hast thou to do in the way of Assyria, to drink the waters of the river? Thine own wickedness shall correct thee, and thy backsliding shall reprove thee. Know therefore and see that it is an evil thing, and bitter, that thou hast forsaken the Lord thy God, and that my fear is not in thee, saith the Lord God of hosts. For of old time I have broken thy yoke, and burst thy bands, and thou saidest, I will not transgress when upon every high hill and under every green tree thou wanderest playing the harlot. Yet I have planted thee a noble vine, wholly a right seed. How then art thou turned into the degenerate plant of a strange vine unto me? For though thou wash thee with nitre, and take thee much soap, yet thine iniquity is marked before me, saith the Lord. How canst thou say, I am not polluted, I have not gone after Balaam? See thy way in the valley, know what thou hast done. Thou art a swift dromedary traversing her ways, a wild ass used to the wilderness that snuffeth up the wind at her pleasure. In her occasion, who can turn her away? All they that seek her will not weary themselves. In her month they shall find her. Withhold thy foot from being unshod, and thy throat from thirst. But thou saidest, There is no hope, no for I have loved strangers, and after them will I go. As the thief is ashamed when he is found, so is the house of Israel ashamed. They, their kings, their princes, and their priests, and their prophets, saying to a stock, Thou art my father, and to a stone thou hast brought me forth. For they have turned their back unto me, and not their face. But in the time of their trouble they will say, Arise, and save us. 
But where are thy gods that thou hast made thee? Let them arise, if they can save thee in the time of thy trouble. For according to the number of thy cities are thy, are thy gods, O Judah. Wherefore will ye plead with me? Ye all have transgressed against me, saith the Lord. In vain have I smitten your children. They receive no correction. Your own sword hath devoured your prophets like a destroying lion. O generation, see ye the word of the Lord. Have I been a wilderness unto Israel, a land of darkness? Wherefore say my people, we are lords. We will come no more unto thee. Can a maid forget her ornaments, or a bride her attire? Yet my people have forgotten me days without number. Why trimmest thou thy way to seek love? Therefore hast thou also taught the wicked ones thy ways. Also in thy skirts is found the blood of the souls of the poor innocents. I have not found it by secret search, but upon the, all these. Yet thou sayest, because I am innocent, surely his anger shall turn from me. Behold, I will plead with thee, because thou sayest, I have not sinned. Why gaddest thou about so much to change thy way? Thou also shalt be ashamed of Egypt, as thou wast ashamed of Assyria. Yea, thou shalt go forth from him, in thine hands, upon thine head. For the Lord hath rejected thy confidences, and thou shalt not prosper in them. So that's a bit of a longer chapter, and I will say a number of the cha coming chapters are about as long or not long, if not longer, so I'm going to have a lot to go over here. But the chapter opens there. The first four verses are God addressing Israel. You were holy. Israel was holy unto the Lord. I brought you out of Egypt, but now hear my words. And then he condemns them out where he just, he really lays into them here. You don't remember me. You don't remember what I did for you. None of you call on me. But he still pleads with them. He still tries to get them to repent. But there's this one thing. Hath a nation changed their gods? No, what he's saying here is the other heathen nations, they all have their gods, and they have been loyal. They have been faithful to their pagan gods, all their false gods. Moab has its god, and they never abandon it. Ammon had its god, and they never abandon it. Assyria had their gods. Babylon has their gods. Israel is the only people who had a god but chose to worship other gods instead, which is made doubly worse by the fact that all the other gods are fake. They're all false gods. They don't actually exist. And yet the people are more loyal to them than Israel is to a true god. And there's the two, uh, two says, have committed two evils. One, they have forsaken me, the living waters, and they have hewn them up, broken sisters. In other words, not only did they stop worshiping me, but they started worshiping, and those are the two evils. They stopped the true worship, and they began pagan worship. And the rest of it is pretty self-explanatory. Uh, uh, Niter, mentioned in verse 22, says uh, an alkali carbonate of soda. So I'm not it's interesting that they had that back then. Saying to a stock, thou art my father, and to a stone thou brought before these are... The idols, of course, wooden idols, the stock is the wooden idol, the stone is the stone idol. And so they're not only turning away from God, but they're giving hit, they're giving credit to the idols for what God did for them. Now, none of this really prophesies of any destruction of Israel in any way. That this, this is just a condemnation. This is Jeremiah, and this is God through Jeremiah saying, these are your sins, this is what you have done, and this is why I reject you. In later chapters, we get actual prophecies of what will happen because of this. But this is just setting it up, saying this is the reason for it all. Now, remember, this is in the 13th year of Josiah. This is just after his initial reformation, where he goes through and destroys all these idols. But it's before his great reformation, which takes place in the 18th year of his reign, where he finds the lost book and all that. We will read about that shortly, but... This is in a time where Josiah is cleansing the land of idols, but the people are still turned to the idols. So remember that. That's, that's, the people are still worshiping the pagan idols, but Josiah is currently in his acts to, he's acting to destroy these idols. So he has, become, he has begun some religious reforms, but they have not taken full effect. Now, we did have this one Joseph Smith translation in verse 24. That last clause says, All they that seek her will not weary themselves. In her month they shall find her. That's the King James. Joseph Smith changes the position of the word not. So now we have, All they that seek her will weary themselves. In her month they shall not find her. So 
if we go back to the full context, this is talking about, this is comparing Judah to wild ass. You are as untamable as a wild ass. I try to correct you, you don't listen. And it makes more sense with the, the switching of the night. It, it's a minor correction, but it makes more sense than that. Before, it was with it, those who seek her will not weary and they will find her, would indicate that God will reclaim, that Israel was willing to be corrected, that the kingdom of Judah was listening and was repenting. But changing the word not is, a more, is much more in line with this rebuke that this chapter is all about. This chapter is condemning Israel for not listening. And this change makes that fit better with the general theme of the chapter. We will leave that here, and we'll pick this up in the next chapter. And remember, the next five or six chapters are very long. These are going to be somewhat longer videos, just like the early chapters of Isaiah. So we'll see you there.